2022 annual meeting. Thank you for being here very much. We are extremely, extremely happy, happy to have you to celebrate um, what has been a challenging and a rewarding year. And if this is any example of what's to come, I think then better things will come. Um, so we really, really appreciate you coming out here. Um, and I won't beat a dead horse, but it's been two years, almost to the day, when this was scheduled back in 2020. Um, I remember clearly my board was telling me that um, we're not going to be able to do it. And I remember saying, Dr. Felch, you said it's only going to be two weeks. <laughs> and our meeting was April 7th, so I said, we've got plenty of time. And then um, I remember calling Krista, um, our incoming board chair, and um, her speaking sense to me and realizing, yeah, it's not going to happen. Little did I know it was going to take two years uh, for it to officially happen again. But um, it is so nice to see you all. And the fact that you're here means that we made it. Um, we really, really, truly made it especially to those businesses that are here as exhibitors and to all the friends of our chamber. Um, this, is, um, this is pretty exciting um, to know what we've been through and where we are, but more importantly, where we're going. And this event tonight is about both things, where we've been, and it, it celebrates our history here in the city of Quincy, but it also, hopefully more importantly, talks about where we're heading and where we're going to go. Um, I just want to start, um, before I bring some folks up here, to make sure that um, you all know who has helped make this possible. And uh, the first group that I want to acknowledge is South Shore Bank, our um, event sponsor. Um, we thank them from the bottom of our hearts um, for not just this event, but everything they do for us. Um, CEO, uh, Chairman and CEO Jim Dunphy, um, He's wearing two hats. He's on our board. He's also on the South Shore Chambers board, and they um, they have uh, the I'm sorry, the YMCA South Shore YMCA's board, and they're having an event tonight somewhere else outside of Quincy, so it doesn't really matter to us. <laughs> but they're South Shore Bank, so it matters to them. And Jim apologizes, but he was here, and there are many people from South Shore Bank here representing um, the team, and the team has been extraordinary from the beginning. From the beginning, from when I started all the way through they've, um, they've been with us, all the way through the pandemic um, and then coming out of the pandemic. It's been really, really satisfying and awesome to have the support that we have um, at this event from them and every event that we do, virtually every event. I also want to acknowledge our mayor, Tom Koch, who is right in front of me, Mayor Koch. Um, he has been a stalwart to the business community um, since before COVID, but specifically since COVID and during COVID, uh, there has been, I've served, I served in Quincy going back to the 1980s. I served under a couple mayors. I know the city's history and there's never been, and maybe never will be, a more pro-business mayor than the mayor that we have here in Quincy. And we're thankful for everything he does for us as a business, as a chamber, uh, to all of the support he gave to those who were struggling, um, not just to us, um, and our businesses, but to the South Shore YMCA, to Father Bills, to Dove, I mean, you name it, the mayor stepped up. Um, and, and he also allowed us to do our business. He didn't go back and put mandates on. He, I, I, you know, he played it straight with us and we really owe him a debt of gratitude for doing what he does, um, being who he is, and leading us through this and onto bigger and better things. There is no more exciting city in the Commonwealth and maybe in the country than Quincy, and he's a big reason for it. So thank you, Tom. We're going to acknowledge our Hall of Fame inductees, but I just want to thank and congratulate them, uh, Quincy Mutual Group and the Cashman Companies, led by their respective chairman um, and CEO, Doug Briggs, for Quincy Mutual. Thank you, Doug. And Jay and Jay Cashman for the Cashman Companies. Jay could not be with us today, he got called out of the country at the last minute, so his sign will represent Jay over here. Um, and his company is well represented and they're gonna come up and accept the award as well. So we thank them and we thank the sponsors for the two awards, uh, Brewster Ambulance and Bank of Ken, who will give out those awards, so thank you. 
we had three cocktail sponsors, and I saw many of you partaking in the cocktails, so I know that they were very important to the success of this event. And they've been with us um, almost from the beginning, so I want to thank them. It's uh, Baker, Braverman, and Barbadoro is one of our cocktail sponsors. Thank you, Paul and Teresa. Uh, Murphy, Hesse, Toomey, and Lahane. Kathy Hesse, I know, is here, and Catherine Murphy, I believe. And G.T. Riley, our accountant, who keeps us in good stead. So thank you all very much. I also want to acknowledge, and again, she'll be coming up um, shortly, but I want to acknowledge our two, 2022 um, and fourth Bruce Wood grant recipient, Karen Smith of Karen's Corner. Many of you know um, or knew Bruce, but for those of you who didn't, um, he was a founding member of the Quincy Chamber Board, the Quincy Chamber of Commerce, and a beloved member of the Quincy business community. Um, and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Bruce and the support that his family gives us. I think Mike and Kathy are both here, hopefully they are. Um, and this award is given out in his name to someone who has exemplified good business sense, but also a commitment to the community which was what Bruce was all about. And um, it means a lot to us that we've continued it through COVID, we continue it. And this is the first year that the, um, the award is being supported and funded by those members who served with Bruce, the founding members of the Quincy Chamber Board. And I wanna thank them publicly for stepping up and contributing to the $5,000 grant. Um, Ed Cohane, Sean Galvin, Frank Trainer, Sean Curry, Greg McDonald, I think they're all here, Dolly DePisa, Ed Fleming, Mike McFarlane, and Tony Ignetti. They have all contributed to this award. And I believe they've committed to contributing to it going forward, but if they didn't, they are now, so. <laughs> Um, I want to acknowledge the presence of our elected officials, too, that are here. And I may miss anyone, and if I do, I'm going to bring Joe Shea up to remind me, because he was always the master of this. Um, our council, city council president, Noel DeBona, is here, I believe, or was here. Um, thank you, Noel. Ward 1 city councilor, Dave McCarthy. I know I saw David is here. David. Ward 5 city councilor, Chuck Phelan, is here. Chuck. And Ward 3 city councilor, Ian Kane, is here. And if I missed anyone, you will please let me know um, before we end today. No, no, we didn't miss John. We didn't miss John. Um, outside of the council, we have county and state officials. Um, by order of appearance, um, we have Norfolk County Sheriff Patrick McDermott is here. <laughs> state Senator John Keenan is here as well. Thank you, John. And Norfolk County Treasurer Mike Bellotti is here as well. And there is one member of the Quincy School Committee that's here that I want to... Oh, my wife Tina is also here. <laughs> if I miss that one, Joe Shea can't even save me on that one, so... Um, and I want to acknowledge the members of our board um, who really make all of this possible, do so much behind the scenes. Um, to keep the chamber going, especially during the tough times, but even during the good times as well. Been very generous to me, um, very supportive to me, up to me and to the entire chamber. So I don't know if I've got everyone, but Jim Dunphy was here earlier, so Jim Dunphy is on our board. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Lorraine C. is here. Lorraine, I hope you're still here from Sunshine Travel. There you are, Lorraine. Thank you very much. Um, our treasurer, Brylene Faherty, is here. Brylene. Our clerk, Ryan Barrett, is here. Ryan, thank you. Our incoming chair, who will be coming up um, later, uh, Janet Batson is here. Janet. I think I saw John, Sean Keneally here. Sean's here on the board. Thank you, Sean. Helen Shiner is here. Thank you, Helen. Um, ben Hires from BCNC is here. Ben, thank you. Jennifer Orman from Coffee Break Cafe is here. Jennifer, thank you. Um, and our newest board member, John Eng, is here. 
And thank God this guy's very tall, because I almost forgot him, but Larry Luizzo, also a new member of our board this year. And I believe, I'm not sure if he's still here, but if he takes after his father, he's not. But Armando Agnetti was here, um, I believe. I don't know if Armando's still here, but Armando is also a member of our board. So we thank them all for being here. And did I miss anyone? All right, good. I, I, I keep my job for another year. Um, I, there is one I missed, but she's coming up. So she's the one I'm, I'm introducing right now. So, um, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce the current chairwoman of the Quincy Chamber of Commerce Board, who has been with us from 2021 to 2022. has been a director for many years um, and is the president and CEO of Dependable Cleaners, Ms. Krista Hegarty. Thank you. All right, so clearly I'm a little shorter. All right, can you guys hear me? Yes. Excellent, excellent. It is so wonderful to see you all. It's also wonderful to see you all so dressed so nicely. All the ties, the jackets, the dresses, the suits. It's awesome to see. So almost a year ago in June, we had our annual meeting out in the tent here, and that was one of the first in-person events that we did. Um, after COVID started. And when I think about all that we've been through, our chamber's been through, our city, our state, each of us individually, all of our businesses, even if your business did well through COVID, it's got to be one of the most challenging times that I found to manage a business. And the chamber has been invaluable to me and to so many other businesses to help us to navigate through this. Um, and the city as well. So I want to talk about some of the accomplishments from this last year and just I've asked members of our board about what were they most proud of through this last year and I'm going to tell you about some of the events but I have to tell you that the thing that almost every person said was it was about connection, communication, it was about how we kept each other sane, how we kept in touch, how we reached out into the community, the ways in which we helped with just information, whether it's the latest new hire grant that's coming out or the prior grants, et cetera. The combination over the last year that we've done about both in-person as well as online events and being able to meet all of you all wherever you wanted to be met and to help in whichever way we could. Sometimes those were just one-on-one -on -one conversations, a call to Tim or Melissa or to Helen or whoever it may be. So some of the accomplishments for this last year is we are actually the 18th largest Chamber of Commerce in Massachusetts. We brought in over 50 new members and we've held the sixth position overall when it came to revenue generated by a chamber. We started our in-person events last June with the annual meeting. We held our golf tournament and woohoo, it's coming up again in June. So get ready for that. Um, last year we celebrate, celebrated Phyllis Godwin and also Cubic Labs. We did a lot with Shop Local, with the farmer's market and the artisan market, the startup of Kilroy Square, the beer garden, and continued that through the holidays with the holiday market, which really brings through so many people. You know, the chamber isn't just about large businesses or medium-sized businesses. It's all types of businesses, from the very smallest, the single proprietor, the artisan, to the very large state streets, et cetera. And that's where the chamber comes in. Um, we've also spearheaded three really important projects. So one is the President's Trail, which we've marked 10 historic sites along the new walking trail, describing Quincy's unique contributions to the founding of America. I love our history. We have the Tiny House Project, which is with the high school, the Votech students are building a tiny house. It is the coolest little thing. And if you are on LinkedIn and follow the Quincy Chamber, Tim has been posting pictures of the progress of the tiny house. And um, over 30,000 were donated in supplies and material. 
um, and it's being built by the Quincy High CBT students. And then the other project is Quest, which is a program for 12 entrepreneurs brought together for called the Streetwise MBA, powered by Interrise. Helen Shiner is a member, has been participating. Helen, why don't you raise your hand over here? I'm gonna highlight her for a couple reasons. So Helen is um, a member going through Quest, so if anybody has any questions, please ask her about it. It's a pretty cool program, and I think that everybody that's been participating has really gotten a lot out of it. The other thing, Helen oversees and really is a mover and shaker with the Ambassadors program. The Ambassadors are a group of Quincy Chamber members that help to bring in new members, um, orient new members, and also to help our current members navigate whatever they need help with. Um, and Helen has really expanded that group and has done tremendous work through the times when there were no in-person events and she just kept it going. So I want to say personally a big thank you. And Helen, why don't you stand up and just so everybody can know. So Helen and I were talking earlier that, you know, the chamber's here and everybody can pay their dues, et cetera. But there's so much that we all gain from the chamber when we start to participate and get involved. And so I encourage you all, if you've heard anything that I've talked about that you are interested in or would like to participate in the board, the ambassadors, or soon I'll be talking about the QIP, then reach out to any one of us and let us know. So, which brings us to the Quincy Young Professionals, Larry Luizzo, wave your hand over there. All right, so excited, we're getting the Quincy Young Professionals back. So all of you who, have, who are or have young professionals in your families, your neighborhoods, your businesses, please encourage them to participate. The first event will be announced soon, but it's going to be at Break Rock Brewing, and I believe it's going to be on May 12th. Um, young professionals are considered 21 to 40. So I may try and sneak in, even though I may be slightly over. Um, but the Quincy Young Professionals, you know what, we've had two years of very little networking and it's time for all of us to get out. The other thing that we have are the swaps, the, the after hours networking with a purpose. And so we'll be having more of those. And starting June 17th, we are combining the artisans markets and the farmers market together and I'm really excited for that to get started again. And we will have a beer garden as well. Um, and the gallery, um, as part of the Kilroy Square, will be a part of that as well. Um, let's see. Let me make sure I didn't forget anything here. All right. So this will be my um, one of my final meetings, I guess. I have a couple more. Um, for me as chair, and then I go on to past chair. And I just want to say thank you to all of you who have made this year so rewarding. Everybody on the board, all of the members, I've really loved leading and participating and being with all of you guys. And I will not stop, though, and will continue to be involved always. So thank you. Someday we'll have a male chairperson again, and I'll give them a golf club or something. So. Um, but uh, thank you, Krista, for all of her leadership, not just in the past year, um, but for all the time she's been on the chamber, and also just as a business person, not only in Quincy, but throughout the South Shore and Boston as well. Um, very few people suffered or were challenged more than Krista when people started working from home in their pajamas, because there were no more shirts, no more suits, um, and so we do encourage you, although I probably should have led by example and wore a tie today, we encourage you to start dressing up, even if you're working from home. Just dress up, get your stuff dry cleaned, okay? So thank you, Krista. Um, we're now going to move into our Hall of Fame induction ceremony, and it's very brief. Um, it's not like the Baseball Hall of Fame, um, where people get on and talk for a long, long time. I've been um, told that speakers are going to be very short. One didn't even come, so it's going to be even shorter. Um, but, um, but it is no less important to me and to our history in Quincy. And we have a great political history. 
with the Adamses and the Hancocks and the Quincy's, but we have an equally strong business history with Howard Johnson and Dunkin' Donuts and Thomas Watson and you know the shipyard and the quarrying, all those businesses that came and went and are still here. And so a few years ago we decided to start to acknowledge those businesses, creating a Hall of Fame. In 2018, I believe it was, it's hard to remember exactly, in 2018 or 19 we inducted our first member of the Hall of Fame, which was Dunkin' Donuts. Started here in 1950 by Bill Rosenberg on Southern Artery, very first Dunkin' Donuts. And one of the requirements is not only that you have a history, but you also have a, a past and a future. That you're not just a relic of the past, but you also are part of the future of Quincy. And Duncan is, all you have to do is drive around Quincy, you know, they are part of our future as well as our past. Last year, um, we um, inducted Granite City Electric and Phyllis Godwin, um, whose fa father started the business in 1923. They'll be coming up in the 100th anniversary next year. Um, also a company that has steeped in history here in Quincy, but also has a very, very bright future as they continue to grow. And so we chose two this year, because we did miss a year during COVID, um, to do it this year with, again, that same sort of thought of history uh, as well as the future potential and growth and part of being what is not just happened, but what is happening. So, um, so the two companies that we are inducting today Quincy Mutual Group and the Cashman Companies have a combined 225-year history in the city of Quincy. And this is almost as old, in, as, old as our city itself, um, or as the founding of this country, not the city, because that's almost 400 years old. But um, they've been around for a long time, both companies, uh, especially Quincy Mutual, which goes back to 1851. So it's just phenomenal. And they have not been set in the past, but are set in the future as well. And that's what we look for, and that's what we strive for, and I think that these companies, including the two that we're about to induct, I think, sort of live that life um, and life of leadership and send a message to all the rest of us that um, there's something more to strive for, because we think that this is, even though the ceremony's not as long, it's just as important as the Baseball Hall of Fame, and someday these folks will be seen as the Babe Ruths, the Lou Gehrig's, the Willie Mays's of Quincy. Um, and that's what we're looking for. So to present our first award is the chairman and CEO of Brewster Ambulance, Mark Brewster, and Keith Wilson, the director of education to the Quincy Mutual Group. Thank you. Good evening. Founded in 1851 over the Jay Breisler's grocery store, Quincy Mutual Fire Insurance Company wrote 10,000 in premiums, including one to the Honorable Daniel Webster in its first year. Today, Quincy Mutual Group writes in excess of 400 million in premiums and has 180,000 policyholders represented by more than 500 independent agents. Chairman and CEO Doug Briggs continues to commit resources through the company's charitable donations and real estate investments to make Quincy a better place to live and work. To accept this award on behalf of Quincy Mutual Group, Chairman and CEO Doug Briggs. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, South Shore Bank. Do you ever go to a charitable event and Jim Dunphy is not there? <laughs> he is everywhere. Good evening, everyone. I'm extremely proud and honored to be included with Jay and Karen as this year's recipients. I'm sorry Jay isn't here because I have a couple things to say to him later. <laughs> My wife, Claudia, always tells me to keep it short because no one wants to listen to you. <laughs> I will, but I have three quick stories that bring back happy memories for me that tie to the entrepreneurial success of our great city and the people involved with this event. The first one involves Krista. She won't know this. When I was between 12 and 14 years old, Krista's grandfather, Don Fawcett, and my father used to occasionally take turns during Chris, uh, driving Chris's uncle and me to hockey practice. Now, 
Fred, who was, was Krista's uncle, could skate faster backwards than the rest of the team could skate forwards. He was just amazing. Don founded Dependable Cleaners, and the, and the plant was right down the street from City Hall. Krista now runs Dependable, that by the way, provides fantastic quality in service, and, and this is a true story. I was walking out the door this morning, and Claudia said to me, do you have anything to go to Dependable today? <laughs> true story. <laughs> My second fond memory is about Granite City Electric, last year's honoree. My grandfather and I, my mother's father, were very close and did everything together. One night when I was about 18, he invited me to the neighborhood club for dinner. Sitting around the table were several Quincy business owners, including Phyllis's father, Nick Papani. They were all complaining about taxes when Nick spoke up and said, I am blessed to have started a company okay with paying appropriate amount of taxes and proud to be an American. At that time, everyone in the group stopped complaining. Those comments still resonate with me after 50 years. And today, Phyllis has grown Granite City into an amazing woman-owned business. And here's my third story. Most ironically, <laughs> Most ironically, most people don't know this, Jay and I were in the same class at their academy. Needless to say, Jay was the cool kid, and I was not. <laughs> but it was a happy time of life for me. I'm going to digress for one second. Yesterday I saw the mayor, and I, just, I told him the same story about Jay and I being in the same class. He was a cool kid, and I wasn't. He looked at me and he said, that sounds about right. <laughs> Tom, did you have to agree with me? <laughs> but seriously, I would venture to say that Jay is probably the most successful business person in our class and has done a tremendous amount of good work for the city of Quincy. I think these stories about three people we know well represent the incredible fabric of our city. Quincy Mutual has been here since 1851 and has been pleased in a small way to help Mayor Koch and his staff, the Chamber, and the greater business community to make this a wonderful city for the, its businesses and citizens. Thank you very much. So, uh, unfortunately, in being totally serious here, Jay Cashman really wanted to be here. Uh, he got called out of the country at the last minute, so he couldn't be here. But he did send his crack team um, here from the Cashman companies. And coming up to, um, to give out the award to uh, Steve Tobin, who is a member of Jay, the CEO, COO of the Cashman companies, is the chairman and CEO of Bank of Canton, Steve Costello. Steven. He is Tom. Uh, uh, it's great to be out with a bunch of entrepreneurs here uh, doing some networking, and it's my pleasure to be able to introduce uh, a Hall of Fame entrepreneur who uh, started a company back in 1965 with his brother. Uh, he has grown it. If you visit their website, you can see that he's given back to the community. But they started in the snow removal business um, and evolved into rubbish removal and masonry. By 1974, working out of a small storefront on Copeland Street, Jay Cashman incorporated Jay Cashman Inc. Today, with its headquarters in Quincy Shipyard, it has become a construction and development company that includes civil and marine construction, dredging, renewables, and more. The Cashman companies have executed some of the most difficult and complex projects in the world, earning national recognition for their engineering excellence. To accept the award on behalf of the Cashman companies will be Chief Operating Officer Steve Tobin.
Thank you. Um, I had a few words prepared, but the gentleman stole most of them. Um, and uh, I have a lot of stories about Jay that I could tell, but I want to keep my job, so I won't go. Uh, but it truly is an honor. Jay, Jay's been in the business since 1965. Um, you know, he's a true entrepreneur through hard work, innovation. You know, he's hired some great folks that have led our, our company. Um, you know, we, he, he takes pride in that. Um, he wished he could be here. He apologized for that, but he supports the community. He, he loves Quincy as a native. He loves being here. Um, he loves being at the Quincy Shipyard. And, he, he, you know, he truly is honored to uh, accept this award. So we appreciate it, and thank you. Thank you very much, uh, both worthy recipients um, and a high bar as we set going forward. Um, so we thank you very much for... Uh, doing everything that you do, because we get it. The mayor gets it, I get it. We all understand that we work together on this stuff and uh, we can make a better city. And today is a, tonight's a perfect example of that. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce and bring up Janet Batson, uh, the incoming 2022-2023 chairwoman, chairwoman of the Quincy Chamber to present this year's $5,000 Bruce Wood grant. J Janet currently serves as an executive at Galvin Builders and Developers and for many years has served as the chair of Discover Quincy. Janet, come on up. Good evening and welcome. Um, for those of you who haven't met me yet, my name is Janet Batson, and I'm excited to be the incoming chair for the Quincy Chamber of Commerce. In my day job, I work for the Galvin Development Company as their vice president of sales, selling and leasing their real estate. But tonight, it's my special honor to introduce the recipient of this year's Bruce Wood Grant. Each year, the Chamber of Commerce presents an award for $5,000 sponsored by members of the Chamber in the name of Bruce Wood. Bruce was a friend to us all and a former Ch Quincy Chamber board member. The grant is given in his name because he exemplified what it means to be a good corporate citizen through his business practices and his commitment to the Quincy community. Tonight's honoree has done the same. Congratulations, Karen Smith. <laughs> A little background on Karen. She was born and raised in Quincy and proud to be a product of Quincy Public Schools. After high school, she went on to Bentley College where she graduated with degrees in both business management and marketing. While in college, Karen started her entrepreneurial business career at a flea market in Booth in Weymouth. Upon graduation, Karen decided to move home and she started Karen's Corner. Many of you in the, in the room have models for Karen, so you've seen her, her clothing. Um, so Karen, uh, Karen, because of her success in, in the flea market, Karen was able to start Karen's Corner without taking any loans or borrowing any money. Her first location was small, only 600 square feet, but soon that she outgrew that space and her, first, her next location was over 1,500 square feet, doubling, more than doubling her space. They moved twice or more after that, and now they're settled in their current location at 133 Beach Street in Wollaston. Karen's family told her, no more moving, we're not helping you. <laughs> From a young age, her parents taught Karen to give back to the community, and she has, big time. One of her passions is her involvement in the Quincy Rotary Club. Karen has been the president of the board of directors, an assistant governor, an assistant governor coordinator for Go Rotary District 7950, which encompasses all of southeastern Massachusetts and Rhode Island. As a club member, she took the opportunity to travel to Rotary, with Rotary to the Dominican Republic, where she helped to install water filters and volunteered at a local medical clinic. Karen has shown her great commitment to the community with involvement in Quincy Community Action Programs, the Mayor's Commission on the Status of Women, Beachwood on the Bay, the Quincy Business Association, Friends of the Kennedy Center, and as a board member of Quincy 2000 Corporation. Karen has also sat on the board of Girl Scouts of Southern Massachusetts and was even a Girl Scout leader for her granddaughter's troop. I have personally known Karen for over 20 years. I taught her granddaughter dancing for many years, so she knows me as Miss Janet. <laughs> um, so she is innately the person the type of person that should deserve this, this grant. She exemplifies the traits we admire so much in Bruce Wood with a lifelong commitment to the Quincy community that she and both Bruce both love. 
it is my pleasure to present the 2022 Bruce Wood Grant to Karen Smith. Thank you, Miss Janet. <laughs> She'll always be Miss Janet. Public speaking is not my best thing. I'll warn you now. I'm honored to receive the Bruce Wood Grant. I want to thank his wife, Kathy, the Wood family, the Quincy Chamber of Commerce, the selection committee, and the founding members who sponsored this. I remember the day Bruce and Frank Trainer joined the Quincy Rotary Club. From that day forward, Woody always had us laughing. He was always one of the first to volunteer for the pancake breakfast where you could find him flipping pancakes at our annual senior luncheon where he made it his personal mission to teach the seniors the value of patience. They'd be like, can you hurry up with the desserts? And Woody would be like, wait a minute. <laughs> In our annual auction where he and his buddies, Eddie Barrett, Frank Trainer, and Steve DeRoche would put together two scratch ticket boards which has continued to be the highlight of the live auction. One year, Woody brought remote-controlled blimps that circled the room at the neighborhood club and got caught in the air conditioning. And we were told that if the fire alarms went off, we were going to have to pay the $500 when the fire department came. <laughs> Woody would always get people involved, and you wouldn't even realize it until you were volunteering, too. I miss his friendship and his great sense of humor. This year, I'll mock 35 years in business. We're coming off two challenging years of COVID, but we've persevered. With this grant, I hope to purchase a mobile boutique. Retail is moving in this direction. It's like a food truck, but for a clothing store. We'll be able to, end, attend, we'll be able to attend shows, festivals, local businesses, and even pull into your driveway for a personal shopping experience. Yeah, <laughs> little wine, cheese, crackers. <laughs> I would like to thank my parents, Marie and Dick Smith, for instilling in my three brothers and I the importance of giving back to our community. From the beginning, they encouraged me to follow my dream. My mom worked for me without pay until her death eight years ago. That's 27 years without a paycheck. I also want to thank Donald, who supports my dreams, even while he grumbles. And anyone who knows Donald will get that. Just last night, I had him in his workshop working on a new display. I am blessed to surround myself with other local small business owners who brainstorm ideas and work together. On a daily basis, Jen Orman, who owns Coffee Break, and I are talking on the phone, bouncing ideas to help our business as well as others. She's a true friend. During the pandemic, we wanted to help other small business owners, and we came up with the idea of the South Shore Survival Bag. Our goal was to sell 100 bags. We sold 300, raised $18,000, and helped 12 local businesses. There's no one. <laughs> There's no one I'd rather do with it than you, Jen. I look forward to serving my community as Bruce did. Again, I would like to thank the Wood family, Tim Cahill, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Selection Committee. Thank you. I told Karen to take the big check, but make sure I sign the small one, because that's the one that counts. I didn't sign Ian's last year, but the big one. You noticed when we saw the picture that I forgot to sign it, so. Um, but we did sign the small one, so. Um, little known fact, um, Karen's brother, Rick, and I 
um, were wrestling competitors, and we wrestled for the city champ, the junior high city championship in 1974. So that had nothing to do with the selection, but I just wanted people to know that. Or, or she comes from a great family, a really great family. Before we leave, I just want to thank some of our some of the people that put this together and helped make this so successful. First, our exhibitors who got here at three o'clock this afternoon and put everything together and are working very hard right up till the end. I want to thank our exhibitors. Our host, Granite Links. Thank you to Granite Links for doing such a great job. Um, and I want to thank my team here because everything that happened here tonight was not as a result of me, but of them, because they do a great job. Melissa Burke, Paula Pesovich. Thank you all very much for being here. We appreciate having you. And if you can stick around, we want to take some photos and get everyone in them. But have a great night and have a great 2022. Thank you all.